It's 2019 and the Toronto Raptors have a new star, only it's not Kawhi Leonard, it's that guy, Pascal Siakam. And yes, Kawhi Leonard has injected the franchise with some championship hope, and he's arguably the best player in the Eastern Conference right now, but Pascal has emerged as a new star on the team. He, he almost looks like a Cameroonian Scotty Pippen sometimes, flying all over the court, uh, impacting the game in a variety of ways, despite lacking this traditional isolation scoring repertoire or some and one handle or something like that. And he's impacting the game like an all league player. Here we can look at his growth from his rookie year till now these uh, statistics are updated through recording this and as you'll see growth in every major category but most importantly he's in the top 20 in any of our all-in-one impact metrics it doesn't really matter how we slice it and for me the thing that I really like about him is that similar to someone like Draymond Green who he's drawn comparisons to before his strengths are tailored to make good teams great. He fits well on stronger teams. Uh, in addition to sitting in the top 20 in all these metrics, Toronto is plus 12 points per 100 possessions with him on the court. That's a whopping 16 points better than when he sits on the bench. And all of these metrics agree that he's a very balanced player, providing strong impact on both offense and defense. In fact, Kawhi has now missed seven games, and the Raptors are 6-1 and one in those games with a double-digit margin of victory. So even though he has a traditional stat line of 14 points, six boards, three assists, which in the past would have earned him some sort of intangible guy moniker, there's nothing intangible or mysterious about Pascal's impact on the game. So let's go to the film. Let's start on defense. First, he uses his seven foot three inch wingspan to make perimeter shots much harder. Yes, that is Pascal high-fiving the unblockable Kevin Durant at the apex of his release and recovering off of a screen to do it, no less. Even when there's no rejection, his long closeouts bother shots, as you see here, or his length can just simply clog passing lanes where this deflection throws off Philly's timing just enough to disrupt the play. When he's in the open court, good night. On this play, his positioning betrays him a bit and he gives up the right hand drive. Notice how quickly he organizes his feet though and then uses that length that I've been talking about to challenge at the rim. That quick organization of his feet can sometimes just erase stuff in an instant. Here's another impressive recover he stops the ball at the three-point line and then stalks the cutter right away, bothering him just enough with his agility and length down at the rim. He's an eager rotator, even if his pickups aren't always perfect. Here, he's a touch late, no hero play and a foul. He also might over-rotate to the baseline on this play, but you can see his length on display on the glass. He just steals the rebound with these condor arms. The Raptors have even played with weaponizing his length and sticking him in the middle of some sort of experimental zone. But I think Pascal's greatest defensive strength, especially in the modern league, is his ability to effectively guard four positions. Look at how smooth his hips are as he effortlessly cuts off the sprightly Eric Bledsoe here. Even against the scariest weapon in today's NBA, the Greek freak with a long runway and an open lane, Pascal wilts the attack by using these defensive tools. Let's watch it one more time. Really quick hips, quick hands, super impressive man defense. Besides being a little off on some of his rotations and lacking Superman help, he's also vulnerable to fives. They're still too powerful and they can take advantage of his slight build. But otherwise he's meshed very well with Kawhi. Here you see they get their signals crossed a bit, but for the most part, they've synced up to terrorize opposing wings. I'm not sure you can defend a handoff better than this beautiful basketball choreography you see on this switch. Pascal's already one of the best grab and go players in the league, only takes a few dribbles from the time he snags a rebound to the rim at the other end of the court. He's most dangerous in early offense, 
where his gliding drives will stress the D. Uh, they open up opportunities for his teammates. And in fact, I'm most impressed by Siakam's vision as a playmaker. His decisions are quick. He's a willing distributor. He finds a variety of connections despite carrying a relatively small load. And he's very efficient with his attacks. On this play, the first dump down to JV doesn't work. And then fluid dynamic vision to see the lob right away. Similar to Giannis, he attacks space very quickly and very well, and sometimes his penetrations legitimately remind me of Scottie Pippen at his best. Overall, his shot creation estimates for teammates are slightly above average, despite being a secondary offensive factor. I think Pascal maps the game well in his mind. Look at him instantly point to JV here to move the ball to the weak spot in the defense, as if he wanted to ricochet it to Kawhi on this hockey assist, but understood the passing lane required an extra pass. Offensively, his game is a cradle of efficiency. He's near the top of the league in points per shot, and it's probably because he was never polluted with poor habits as a kid taking up basketball later in life. He never jacks ill-advised fadeaways, he doesn't dance with the ball a lot, he doesn't stop any free-flowing offense, and these are other reasons why he's tailor-made to make good teams great. His penetrations are slithering and quick and difficult to deal with because of his athleticism and his length. Almost all of his offense comes this way or on spot-up three-pointers. 95% of his looks, according to Basketball Reference, are within 10 feet of the hoop or three-point shots. He's now a capable spot-up shooter, as I mentioned earlier, and this extra dimension forces defenses to respect that outside shot. It's going to open up his drive and creating ability more. Right now he's shooting about 35% from downtown on low volume, which makes him about an average three-point threat in today's league, but he's comfortable enough now that if you give him space, he'll shoot it over you. You know, we're, we're often slow to recognize the value of strong defensive players who don't light up the points per game column. And Pascal lacks Draymond's strength, and he doesn't have his ability to blow up plays in the paint, uh, but, but Draymond's one of the best defensive players of all time. It's unlikely that Siakam ever reaches that level defensively. He doesn't need to, but he should garner all defensive consideration this season and with his clearly positive impact offense that fits well alongside other star players i think he's a worthy all-star selection in the eastern conference right now i want to thank my patrons for making this video possible they make all of the work i do possible including my podcast thinking basketball or anything i write over at nyloncalculus.com or backpicks.com if you like this video and you want to support any of this content that I do, please consider going over to Patreon and signing up. You'll get some perks. Uh, but also, if you want more videos, let me know, say, maybe some player profiles on this year's sophomore class. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.